What we're talking about now is post hoc tests and analysis of variance. So you've performed your ANOVA and you found a main effect, a significant main effect, which is how a statistician would say that an independent variable is found to have a significant relationship with a dependent variable. You have multiple treatment groups and so while you know that there's a reliable difference among these groups, you don't know which treatment levels reliably differ from the other treatment levels. So here's an example. You test five cold remedies to see which one works best, and you find there is a reliable difference among these five drugs and how quickly the people recover. What you don't know is which drugs are reliably better than which other drugs. What do you do? The answer to this question is to perform a post hoc test. Ah, but which one? Well, the first test was, the, was derived by Sir Ronald Fisher. It's called the LSD test, or the least significant difference. And it was uh, developed by Fisher just to do these post hoc tests. It's the least conservative of these tests, which means you are more likely to reject the null when you should not do so. So LSD is not conservative. which makes it not a very good choice, frankly. Well, uh, along comes another statistician by the name of Tukey. And Tukey says the LSD test is not conservative enough, so he makes some modifications to that formula to make his test a little bit more conservative. And the Tukey, well, he called it the HSD, or Honestly Significant Difference Test. Most people call it the Tukey test, but that was kind of a slap at Fisher, no question about it. So, Tukey, an NHSD test, is more conservative. I'll just go like that, more conservative. More conservative, but it ends up not being the, uh, the best answer either. Now, along comes the Chaffe test, and the Chaffe test is very, very popular. Whoops, that's an it. That's a F right there, shift A. It's very popular <coughs> as it's the most conservative. And what the shift A test does is to calculate the alpha rate for all pairwise comparisons. In other words, if we've got four groups, A, B, C, and D, what shift A does is to calculate A against B, A against C, A against D, B against C, and B against D. Okay, you already know that. But what it also does, that's kind of unique, is it calculates the error rate for complex comparisons. So for example, suppose D is a placebo group, or it's the drug that's already number one in the marketplace, or it's your new experimental group. You can set up comparisons to compare A, B, and C together against this standard. So. Chaffe does what the other tests do, A against B, B against C, C against D, but it also will calculate all these complex comparisons. And so, because it does that, and it's calculating many more comparisons than the other tests, it is less powerful than the other tests. What do I mean by less powerful? What that means in everyday language is with the Chaffe, because it is calculating so many comparisons, you are going to accept the null sometimes when you shouldn't. So Chaffe is indicated best for those experimental designs where the a priori, or before you begin the experiment goal, is to compare a couple of treatment groups against one standard. So what does that leave us with? That leaves us with the Bonferroni test. The Bonferroni test is a uh, kind of a compromise if you want to look at it that way. Bonferroni is not good for these kind of complex comparisons, but it is conservative. It is more conservative than LSD, but it is also more powerful. than Chaffe. So this is the most commonly used test and uh, most statisticians love it and think it's pretty darn good. 
and so generally you're going to use the Bonferroni post hoc tests unless you are doing uh, complex comparisons.